just had to share that with you all. The eruption of La Soufrière volcano in St. Vincent in the Caribbean over the weekend. Now, those are not shock waves. Those are gravity waves coming away from that volcano. And a lot of that ash covered the island and nearby Barbados. The eruption was rated at VEI number four. Now, that's not going to be as strong as Mount St. Helens and definitely not as strong as Pinatubo, but that's certainly in the ballpark of some of the Chilean volcanoes that we've had over the past decade, and also about the same as that one in Iceland in 2010. Looking at the weather patterns on this Tuesday afternoon, we've got our frontal system hung up in South Texas. That's probably transitioning over to a stationary front, and the tail end runs back through the Deming, New Mexico area, up the Mogollon Rim, and into the central Nevada region. And we do have a bear clinic system in that area. You can see the contrast between the 80s in the southwest deserts and the 50s and 60s up in northern Nevada, which is definitely below normal for this time of year. I did take a look at the air mass out there in the San Joaquin Valley. That looks pretty cool to me. Doesn't look like it to you, 70s in mid-April. And there is a northwesterly flow, and I did see an inversion on the soundings in the San Joaquin Valley, at least one right there, and a deeper one up there at about 15,000 feet. Weather in the South Plains is moderated by this high pressure area, 1024 millibars, driving 50s and 60s all the way down into Texas. And you can see the dew points there running 20s and 30s, which means no severe weather. And as we go up north, there is a Alberta clipper coming through Minnesota and South Dakota. And you can see those very cold, blustery conditions up there with snow showers all the way back into North Dakota, South Saskatchewan, and northeastern Montana. And as we go even further north, look at that, just not quite done with winter, 1046 millibar high, which is definitely very strong up there north of Churchill, where it's 10 degrees at this hour. However, as we go further north up into Alaska, you can see there's been a moderating trend up there with the temperatures coming up into the 40s. There's a look at the 250 millibar patterns, the top of the troposphere. And we see that even though things are quiet in the southern U.S., we do have strong flow, 60 to 70 knot flow across much of the central and southern plains. And very likely we have a polar front jet coming from British Columbia across the Midwest, possibly merged up with a subtropical jet down along the Gulf Coast region. And up to the north, we see that troughiness, which is partly responsible due to that very cold weather up north. And then we have a split flow pattern even further north with a branch of this polar front jet going through northern Canada. And also out to the Pacific region, big old trough here with ridging extending further north, and that's a blocking pattern. So that's going to keep North America kind of in this pattern likely for the next week or so. So if you want to see what I'm talking about, there's the 300 millibar chart for today. Notice the troughing up to the north, the double bullseye. And there's Friday. Well, not much has changed. It looks like those two troughs have shifted a little bit to the east. There comes that cutoff high up there in British Columbia, but not much change to the pattern. Still kind of a fast flow there off of the southern Rockies. And then going into next week, yeah, looks looks the same there. Here comes a trough digging into the central U.S., though, on Sunday. But overall, just kind of troughy with a ridge out in the western U.S., western Canada, and a trough in the Great Lakes in northeast U.S. And that's the case all the way through, good grief, probably the end of the month. And then finally, we start pushing in some really strong waves, and that should start breaking up the pattern a little bit. You can see that earlier in the run, just continuous northerly flow from Canada. But as we get into the end of the month, around the 28th, 29th, we start pushing some warm air into Canada, and that'll flip the pattern a little bit and push us maybe into 
a bit of a more late spring pattern for the start of the month. There's a look at the weather threats this afternoon. We've got a red flag condition all the way from Vegas back towards Albuquerque due to strong winds and dry conditions, hot weather. Further to the east, freeze warnings, frost advisories out there for Omaha out towards south of Des Moines and up to the north, winter weather advisory for that snow up there in North Dakota. And then just kind of a hodgepodge of various wind and other advisories. And then down in southern Louisiana, a bit of a severe risk down there with flooding storms in that region. And we can see it there on the SPC products, a slight risk for East Texas all the way to southern Louisiana. And with that strong flow aloft, 60 to 70 knots, any bit of moisture that we can get north into this region will interact with that shear and produce some long-lived storms. The main problem is, though, we're, of course, infiltrating some dry air, and that will limit the northward coverage of those storms. Now, looking at the surface map, I think we've got a reinforcing shot of cold air coming south. Now, all of this is heavily modified polar air. However, we've got this next batch coming in from the north. And I would say the boundary is about like that. That's one thing that they're focusing in on. And you can see the slight difference in the temperature up to the north versus the 82 over 72 down to the south. And here's another edge to that air. Looks like that's going to be right up there near Texarkana, El Dorado, back towards northern Mississippi. And that connects back up into that system right there. So, yeah, with that moisture out ahead of it, there is certainly the possibility for some storms out there in East Texas. So going back to my surface map, I'm probably looking at something a little bit more like that there. So obviously we're not seeing much in the way of anything on that boundary. That's going to be roughly in this area here, and that was down towards Waco, just not showing up at this hour, even though it's mid-afternoon. But we can see the influx of moisture, it's trying to make it up there, but uh, rapidly meeting up with that dry air up to the north. But a few towers going up there around uh, the Sabine River, south of uh, Shreveport, and that'll probably be the start of some of the convection we have this afternoon and you can see the shear on those anvils right there rapidly streaming off towards the east northeast and then another thing we can do is cross check that with a high resolution rapid refresh model we were seeing convection going up right in that spot the models are pretty much in the ballpark you know developing some stuff there around palestine jacksonville down towards crockett and you can see there's a very slight northward advection. And then it finally starts interacting with that boundary that we saw up towards a little bit closer to Dallas. And let's see, that kind of doesn't really do a whole lot, organizes a little bit, a little bit of upscale growth there around just after dark. And then it moves on off towards the east. It looks like some warm advection starting to get set up there helping to feed those storms. And another model that I like looking at is the ARW. That's got a superior physics package, and quite often this model nails down the details pretty well. The downside is this is a 12Z run. However, little complexes growing up there around Nakagdoches, Lufkin, down to Crockett, not so much activity after dark, and I think that's more likely what we may see. Only around 4 to 5 in the morning, some stuff going up east of Dallas. And then it does start coming together early tomorrow morning, mostly in the eastern counties of Texas into Louisiana there, and forms this MCS towards uh, midday. So, yeah, it looks like a rainy pattern there from Houston out towards New Orleans over the next 24 hours. Then the day two outlook focusing a marginal risk on the western Gulf Coast region. That's probably that MCS there in Louisiana and just very slight possibilities further back into Texas where convection may be a little bit more elevated. 
Nothing interesting on the day three pattern. Looks like dry air is taking its toll. They're looking for modest low-level warm air advection across Texas, but Gulf moisture mostly cut off thanks to the cold front draped over the region. So when do we get that deep moisture? Well, to me, I think the best product is on the GFS panels. You go into this upper air moisture pattern on pivotal weather there, 850 millibar dew point. So that kind of avoids the effects of very thin surface moisture and avoids a lot of problems with mid and upper level moisture. And this looks at the kind of profiles that support thunderstorm development. And you can see how that focuses on deep east Texas there and a little bit further back into the Del Rio and Hill Country area. Okay, so we can't rule that area out around San Antonio and Junction. We did have a little hailer go up yesterday around Mason, north of Fredericksburg. Wouldn't be surprised to see that again today. Anyway, we're looking at the uh, next week or two. Let's see what happens. Yeah, very modest moist advection. Most of it goes up the Pecos River Valley late in the week. And you can see that influx of dry air coming in from the north. So we end up with this little squeegee plume of moisture going up into the Midland Pecos area late in the week. I would not be surprised to see a few isolated storms out in that area during the week. And only around Friday do we start getting a little bit of a supply of moisture northward. So we could see a little bit of organization around that time. But as you can see, the rest of the country just not getting much. And the northeast U.S. under that cold flow, like they've had pr practically a whole winter. Anyway, this little system moves on by for the weekend. Saturday heads eastward. Northerly flow opens up late in the week. So it looks like some cool, dry weather coming in early next week. You can see how the Gulf is pretty much shut off there. See, this is a really superior product for looking at potential convective moisture. And you can see another boundary coming down for Tuesday. That's a reinforcing shot. Anticyclogenesis over Texas. That'll also keep the moisture out for a while. Some of it starts sneaking up the Rio Grande into the Caprock area. Thursday next week, the 22nd. And considering the time of year this is, with the strong heating, there could be a little, inter little bit of interaction with that moisture, possibly around the 23rd. Just not anything too impressive. But yeah, 24th, this looks a little bit better. Looks like 60s dew points at 850 coming northward. And that's hinting at an MCS there around the Dallas area, around the 25th maybe. Moisture snakes back up towards the panhandles. Yeah, I don't think we're really going to have to wait until May for severe weather. Looks like it could be starting up during that last week of April. And you can see 50s and 60s dew points at 850, making it all the way up into the central plains, the high plains up there in Nebraska, Colorado, and Kansas. Another system comes south. Little interaction with that, 29th. So, yeah, I think after about a week to a week and a half, we could be starting a slow shift into a proper spring pattern. Anyway, I hope that gives you a little bit of context there as we get into the depths of spring. I will try to present some more features, mesoanalysis stuff, and other interesting things, so be sure to stay tuned. And for all those supporters, I definitely appreciate your assistance, helping to keep the show going. And anyway, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up there. We'll see you all tomorrow. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye.